Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm doing a review on the Everlast Elite Synthetic Leather Face Bar Headgear. So check it out. Hey, what's up guys? Carlo here and today I'm doing a review on the Everlast Elite Synthetic Leather Face Bar Headgear. This retails for $69 on the Everlast website. It comes in this one colorway, which is the traditional black and yellow that you see on a majority of Everlast products. Uh, you can get it in two different sizes. They have a ML, like a medium large or a large XL, just depending on the size of your head. Uh, and the headgear is made in China. Now, I've been wanting to try this face saver for a while now, uh, mainly because I've tried uh, the Elite uh, boxing gloves, uh, both the entry level ones and uh, the higher end ones that I believe are $129. They also have um, the Elite tie style gloves, which are actually my favorite out of all of the Elite uh, model lineup, which I was really impressed with. I did a review of those uh, last year uh, during the middle of the height of the pandemic, and I was really impressed with those. So. It only came natural for me to want to try out this uh, face saver headgear and I came away with being really disappointed with this thing and uh, to be honest with you guys I only used this headgear for two rounds and I had to take it off because what ended up happening was this nose uh, the nose bar right here uh, ended up jamming into my nose uh, several times to the point where it was so frustrating that I just took the headgear off and stopped using it altogether. Um, so you guys will see when I put this thing on uh, what I mean by that, it, they say that this is a steel reinforced um, face saver, the bar across here, uh, which I find is a little odd because typically when you have a steel uh, face bar headgear, you're able to usually mold uh, the bar. So you can, if you have any kind of pressure points on like your forehead, your temple, your cheekbones, wherever it may be, you can typically either compress it or pull it open um, to kind of get rid of those pressure points if you have it. And with this, even when I kind of push down on it or I pull it, it just goes back to its original shape. I don't feel like you can really mold this uh, like you would think you could with the steel uh, face bar headgear. It is relatively lightweight at 11.7 ounces, but a lot of that has to do with the material they use, synthetic. The quality of this is pretty below average. Um, the big thing here is it just feels kind of like an incomplete headgear. It's made in China. It, the synthetic they use here is the same kind of synthetic material they use on like their elite pro style gloves, the entry level stuff you can find at like the sporting goods stores or the department store. So it's very thin um, and just feels cheap. Uh, the padding on the forehead in the temple area is de definitely nice and firm. They use multi-layer foam padding is which they describe it as. You have the Everlast logo on each side of the temple right there. Some stitching on the front uh, and then you have the nose bar. One thing you'll notice is that the nose bar is relatively the same distance as your forehead. Uh, where it sticks out. So just kind of give you guys a reference right there. Uh, rotating around, you do have the eardrums. And when I say it feels incomplete, you can actually see the foam on the inside. You can actually, I can like stick my finger through that eardrum piece and you can actually see the inner foam and it's manufactured that way. It's not even stitched in. It just, to me, that's incomplete. You only have single stitching. So not only is this super flimsy, but then, you, you know, you have single stitching. The stitching pattern is not the best. And then you can even see the top crown. So the top crown, again, just has kind of like this exposed foam, uh, which feels really cheap. I do like the top lace closure. I'm always a big fan of using laces for both the crown and the rear adjustment, even though this doesn't have that. So you do have uh, nice round laces for the top adjustment uh, with the nylon right here and the nylon strap. So that's good. That's a good thing. It's a positive. There goes the other ear and the stitching on that side. You have Elite uh, Evershield. So Evershield... Uh, is going to be basically the technology they call it for this the padding that they use on the inside of this face saver and then the liner is pretty standard everlast the ever dry material uh, which i like i like the material that they use on the inside it's comfortable it does a good job of kind of gripping to your face and it does a good job of, of uh, a good job a good job excuse me of drying out so after, obviously after you're done sparring you're going to be super sweaty and the inside of the headgear gets pretty sweaty. I do like this compared to like the suede type material because the suede material tends to just 
retain moisture where this does a better job uh, of drying out. So I do like that. Uh, the inside has a softer foam padding, which is good. So the comfort is definitely there. Like when you put this on, it does feel comfortable. I'll give them that uh, in terms of the foam against your face. So I didn't have any issues there, nor did I have any issues with pressure points. Uh, then you have the rear. So the rear part of the portion of the head uh, has about an inch thick of nice firm density foam padding uh, on both sides. And the thickness of the forehead too, all the way around, just to show you from the top, is again about an inch thick throughout the entire headgear. So it's pretty much the same and uniform throughout. You do have an open tapered neck right there. And then you also have the rear Velcro adjustment that is all one piece. So it it's, has that and then you have these elastic straps on that side and that side to kind of give you some flex. So you have that, that Velcro adjustment. Uh, for the horizontal or crown adjustment of your head, you know, where this is going to be the top and that's going to be the depth of how far your head sinks into the headgear. Uh, so there you have it. And then the chin strap. So coming down here, you can see the chin strap. Again, it just feels kind of cheap. You have Velcro. There's no buckle and there's no quick clip system here. It's completely all Velcro. Uh, there is the bottom portion to show you guys. And then you also have uh, the little um, opening right here for where the strap goes through and then you just come back around. Nothing too crazy there in terms of technology uh, with that. So again, just feels kind of cheap. You can see that the way they cut the synthetic is just looks like it's very rushed um, and that they didn't really take much time or de attention to detail when they put this together. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on so I'll show you guys how this thing fits on my head. Okay. So putting it on, I'll show you guys the chin strap as well. So you have to open this portion up. This just goes right through the hole and comes back, tucks underneath to the Velcro and then this flap goes over to cover that. The good news is that the positioning of the chin strap is right under the chin. So regardless of how you move your head, left, right, up, down, rotating it around, you don't feel that the, the, the strap goes too far back on your throat where you feel like you're getting choked out. So that's a good thing. They did a nice job with the positioning of the chin strap. Um, the visibility is actually pretty good for a face saver headgear. I have good um, lateral side to side vision. I can see up and down pretty well for a face saver. Again, a face saver is never going to be good in my opinion as a standard open face headgear or a cheek style protector just because you have this large bar that's blocking your peripheral vision. Now, the biggest issue, aside from the quality with this headgear, is going to be the nose bar. Now, the issue I've had with this, regardless of the position, and I got the correct size for my head, is that when you take a straight punch on, you literally, your nose is literally touching against the inside of this face bar. So the minute you get punched straight on into the face, this bar jams right into your nose. And I went two rounds with this headgear, and I took a couple shots in the nose, and I was just like, you know what? Screw this, I took this headgear off when I put my regular um, open face headgear back on and I continued to spar. Um, but it just was such a pain to use and a nuisance. The fact that I kept getting hit in the nose over and over, to me, it takes away the entire point of having this face saver if this thing is going to act as like a protruding nose. And that's my best analogy for this face saver, or really any face saver, is the fact that, yes, it's supposed to be here to, to basically stop any kind of punches to land physically on your nose or touch your eyes if you want to call it but what ends up happening a lot of times with these face savers is it actually extends the target for your sparring partner to hit so now when they punch you in the face they have this gigantic bar right here where they can literally touch you on any portion of this and you'll feel it the vibration and the concussive force of the punch regardless if you get punched right on the middle to the side like at an angle with a hook, or even worse, an uppercut. So even if they are, aren't accurate, they can just barely nick underneath right here with an uppercut. And what that's going to do, because the chin strap is on, and this thing is tied on your head, it's going to lift your head up. And when your head is lifted up, guess what's blocking your vision, your, this bar right here. So by the time, that split second, by the time you, you're, you come back down to see what's going on, he might be throwing a straight right. And going for the kill shot. So he might hit you with the uppercut, boom, 
by the time that split second's going and he comes to throw that straight right hand, boom, you're taking a shot again. So to me, you know, with all face savers, not just this one, that's the biggest issue. But with this one, it actually touches your nose. Coming to the side here, you can see that the ears are pretty good as far as the ergonomics and the placement of the ears. Um, I feel that, again, this feels really cheap here. The other issue is the fact that, yes, you have padding around the ear canal opening, but it's there's really nothing right here. There should be maybe like a bar or something to protect your inner eardrum from taking a hit and preventing any kind of like popping of a blood vessel inside your ear. And that's why you see a lot of like uh, mixed martial art fighters that have those cauliflower ears is because they take a lot of hit uh, uh, to the side. Um, going towards the back, the pad on the feel, uh, the back feels really good. The tapered neck feels good. I have good amount of rotation there. Uh, it feels really nice as well. So I do like that. Coming to the left side, everything feels good right there. Uh, the, the thing that sucks about this headgear in a, is the fact that it is comfortable. Not sucks, but what I mean by that is it feels comfortable, but it has too many flaws that offsets that that makes you not want to use it. You know, a lot of headgears will have these pressure points. It feels like you're wearing a brick on your head. With this one, it's actually pretty comfortable. Like the padding on the inside feels good against my head. I don't have any issues with my temples or my forehead, my forehead hurting. No issues with my cheek or the back of my neck hurting. So the actual comfort of it is good, but I feel like they just need to modify the nose area right here. Maybe kind of bring it out a little bit more so you have a little bit of a gap. And this is the way it's supposed to sit. Typically, headgears are supposed to sit a little angled. So when you take a shot, it comes down and tucks underneath your nose. It doesn't go just right into your nose. And then up the quality a little bit. Even if it is a synthetic version and a cheaper entry-level version, do a little bit better with the, the eardrums. You know, seal off the areas where the foam is exposed. You know, maybe put a little quick clip right here. Put a little bit more. Give the customers a little bit more of what they're asking for. Uh, rather than kind of cheaping out and just kind of throwing this headgear together. Uh, but that's my thoughts on this. You know, for $69, um, regardless if you think it's worth it or not, I don't think it's worth it just, just for the fact that at, at the, I guess you can call it the base of what this headgear is supposed to do, the fundamental thing that it's supposed to do, which is protect your nose, it doesn't even do that. So that's the biggest issue with this face savior headgear, regardless of price is that it doesn't save your face. So hopefully Everlast can do better, both in, in terms of quality and making a headgear that actually performs and does what it's supposed to do. Um, and that's my thoughts on this. So if you guys have any questions or comments, make sure you guys leave them down below in the comments box. I'll put the link in the description box where you can find this Everlast Elite nose bar headgear. I'll see you guys later. Take care.